Britain's businesses are under attack from customers who complain online. It was filthy dirty. Blue when you sat on it, rocks, you know. I'm Ruth Watson and I want to find out if businesses are bungling. I just think that's insane. You're asking for trouble. Or if reviewers are being unfair. I think you're nitpicking and I don't agree with that. It's a criticism. I'll suggest a plan to banish the bad reviews. This is not going to be something you're immediately going to enjoy. Because the reviewers are returning undercover. Oh, darling, so what's your favourite? I think it's actually got worse. Before the business and the critics come face to face. The squid I had was actually burned, but I just didn't eat it. What are you doing? I'd rather you sent it back. Today, a restaurant on an exposed pier is hit by some chilling criticism. The worst experience I've ever had in a restaurant. Oh, really? Yeah. That hurt? Yeah. It is a bit like a cab home in that. Owner Anastasia tries to keep her cool. You're the glacial blonde, but I don't believe that's who you are. If you cry, I'll cry too. So can Anastasia do enough to satisfy her critics? You're the personality that would like to show everything off you have. Any dumb question? Would you come back? Gravesend in Kent lies on the south bank of the River Thames. For the last three and a half years, part of its historic pier has been leased by Riva, a bar and restaurant owned by Russian emigre Anastasia Zinkovich. I've um, had the business for three and a half years. Um, it was probably a pure luck that I ended up with this premises. But the picture looked so wonderful, just on the internet, it was just amazing. And I was just like, well, what the hell? And my ex-partner always wanted to own the restaurant, so we decided, well, why not? Let's try to do something of our own. These days, Anastasia is helped by two managers. On the land side end, James is in charge of the bar where customers can also enjoy a simple menu and traditional cocktails. When the sun's out, everyone comes out down here. I'll cross on the Thames. Everyone loves coming down on the river when it's lovely and sunny. That's where we're most of busiest. Beyond the bar, the formal fine dining restaurant, which draws most of the negative online reviews, is managed by Anna. You put so much into what you do when you do parties, and when people are always fine and it's nice and everything is great when they're here, and then behind your back they're putting something online, it hurts a little bit. Riva Bills itself is the perfect place for special occasions, serving Mediterranean-style food, but the online reviewers have very mixed opinions. Stunning location. The food was lovely. Highly recommended. Absolute shambles on the restaurant. Not worth the price. Absolutely freezing inside. My life for the last three and a half years has been in this premises. Um, I remember sometimes, I don't know what time we live in the morning, and you go online and you read something bad. It can be really upsetting. As a fellow restaurateur, I can sympathise. Bad reviews can be bad for business, but I need to find out if these reviews are fair. I found somebody who's already left feedback online, and I've asked two other keen online reviewers to visit for me. Andrew is a butler and a qualified sommelier. He describes himself as an ardent reviewer. Tracy runs an education resource website for kids. She also writes her own blog. Sam Friend is a security guard and a regular online reviewer. In his report on Reva, he wrote, I beg you, avoid this place. You've all been to Riva, and I'd like to ask you a few questions about how you got on. So I'll start with the lady, Tracy. It was empty, there was just us on one of the tables, so we were kind of waiting for it to fill up, but it never did. So it was a bit of a shame, really. There were 12 people in there in total for the whole evening, well, the whole time that I was there. So we're getting a feeling of an abandoned ship here. Um, so Sam, what did you eat? Uh, I had the steak, 
It wasn't. It definitely wasn't a now, steak. Apostrophe. It isn't yes. a good sign. <laughs> steak. It was just a slice of beef. It wasn't fried or anything. Not what something that I would want to pay for, to be honest. Right. Okay. Andrew. I had the steak with chips. It was tough. Very dry, sinewy. What about the pricing? Did you think it was reasonable? I thought it was a little bit overpriced in total for what I had. Right. The owner, which I think it was her, a blonde lady, was sat in the corner looking very miserable. We kind of thought maybe she's sort of going down with the ship, really. Did you have any problem whatsoever with the warmth or coldness? It was all fine for all of you? As the evening drew on, I certainly had to put my jacket on. Uh, I started to get cold. Tracy? It was very cold for us. Um, I had a, a top one, I had to put my coat on kind of throughout the meal. Okay, not a good experience then. The worst experience I've ever had in a restaurant. Oh really, ever. that yeah. bad? So in terms of the food and the service and the ambiance, all a zero for you? 100% zero, yeah. Well, the reviewers didn't hold back with their criticisms. Sam thought the food was terrible and felt the staff didn't deal well with his complaint. Tracy thought the near empty restaurant lacked ambiance and it was so cold she had to put her jacket on. Andrew thought the food was overpriced for what he had and he also found the restaurant very cold. But there are two sides to every story, so before I decide what, if anything, needs to be done, I'm going to check out Reva for myself. I'm just about to walk onto the pier, and it's the original pier, but there's this fantastic restoration, this glazed building, but it's still got elements of the old about it. We have a timbered ceiling with great metalwork, and this particular corridor does go to the ferry, um, but they have this entire building, and I'm, I think it's stupendous. At the far end of the pier, overlooking the water, is the restaurant. The kitchen is in the middle, and the bar is at the front, where I'm meeting the owner. Hello. You must be on the stage. Yeah, nice to meet you. It's a very beautiful day, but I imagine it's not always beautiful here. Not always. <laughs> when I look at your online reviews, um, the cold gets mentioned a lot. Yes, absolutely. Presumably a lot of the draft just comes up through the woodwork. Our woodwork, roofs, I mean our roofs are not insulated, they're all listed, so there's nothing insulation can be done, same with the floors. Which must be a real worry for 10 you. plus <laughs> yeah. a year just on the heating. 10,000 a year just plus on the heating. on the heating. It's a lot of money. Okay, brace yourself. One of the reviews picked you out as being very rude. Now, okay. how do you feel about that? I guess because of my background, sometimes you can come um, across a little bit more abrupt than maybe there's some person who was um, brought up in this country, so you try to do your best. The bar food does well, but it's Anastasia's menu in the restaurant which is failing to draw in the crowds. How much are you still committed to having a proper restaurant if it doesn't work for you? Um, it still works in a way. We do a lot of functions and weddings, so right. we went probably more down network because um, there's not many places in Gravesend where people can come in and have a beautiful view and still good food. With your permission, may I have a little look around? Yes, please do so. That's very kind of Thank you very I'll much. I'll see you later. later. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, come on. This is a fantastic space. What a room. I think I'd be prepared to freeze in here for a short period of time. It's just terrific. But the problem is it's not just cold in one week of the year. It's cold in the autumn. It's cold at Christmas. It's cold in springtime. And I can see why. Because through this cold king, I can see the river. And you can see why it's going to be freezing. But this is a fantastic space. And it should be full all the time of happy punters. But I've read the restaurant's online reviews, and I know that's not happening. So what do bar manager James and restaurant manager Anna feel might be the problem? Do you think Gravesend can support sort of three or four high-end restaurants or not? 
there is a lot of restaurants in Grey's Inn, but the thing is, obviously, we do do deals in the bar as well, like uh, food deals and everything like that, drink, drink deals and all so, so it shouldn't should be too bad. You're not as busy as mm-hmm. you might like to be in the restaurant area. Um, why do you think that is, Anna? Do you think it's too expensive? No, I don't actually think it's too expensive, and we are, we are by far not the most expensive place in Grey's Inn. How would you change it? What would you do to improve it? Uh, probably, if it, was from, if it was me, I would change the menu in the restaurant a little bit. If not, get rid of it altogether. Okay. <laughs> and why? Why would you get rid of it altogether? Uh, because the rest, the restaurant is just it's just a major major problem for us, and uh, it's just where all the complaints are coming from. That's. I mean, I mean, not totally getting rid of serving food, but just doing it in a different style and getting doing it more lounge rather than having the fine dining experience over there because it's just a look. <laughs> well, that says it all. If the managers don't like Weaver's concept, why would the customers? Having done my little tour and having spoken to James and Anna, I remain bowled over by this space. I think it's just terrific and hugely disappointed that, but for a few very small things really, it's getting such poor reviews. I want to talk with her about how she can get the same amount of successful busyness from the bar area into this area because I really don't think it would take too much for customers to fall back in love with this place. But first, I want Anastasia to recognize what her priorities should be. I have had that at that restaurant, and believe you me, it tasted as bad as it looks. She needs to fix this if she wants to spare herself the pain of bad reviews. It's your place now. This might have been his dream. It's not your bloody dream, is it? It's your nightmare. a Gravesend restaurant and bar, owner Anastasia and her staff are working on some new dishes for a simpler, more casual menu. To help banish bad reviews, I want Anastasia to convert her restaurant and bar into one big lounge bar. Soon, two of the reviewers will be back undercover, but will she have done enough to satisfy her critics? And to help with the plan, I want the bar to be even better. To inspire her, I'm taking Anastasia to visit a similar business in London. I think she could learn a thing or two from owner Jan Warren Yeki. I think the key that I've always uh, kind of striven towards is making the bar and the restaurant accessible and giving the customers what they want and creating an atmosphere and an ambiance. And that, to me, is one of the most important things. So you kind of are always aware and always try to be flexible. And I think that's another key, is, is flexibility in reacting to the circumstances. We've tried to read our clients, and we obviously realised what they needed in the bar kind of side of it. Restaurant is still kind of struggling a bit. So it would be good to know how you managed to get both of them working together. We try here to create an environment that is, as you can see from the building, is a very beautiful place, very professional service, very good food, but at an affordable price. I think for Anastasia, because the bar works so well for her with the food as an adjunct, that what I'm suggesting is that she really makes majors on that, you know, where the restaurant doesn't work for her, to extend the bar offer, and, and if that's the bit that works, and I'm oh, sure you would agree. Absolutely, yes. Jan's house cocktails are very popular, and something which Anastasia could emulate. <laughs> So, Robert, you're going to show Anastasia how to make a cocktail. It's going to be mostly liqueur, very nice homemade cocktail. Is this one for the girls? Very good. <laughs> it would help her to relaunch Riva as the trendy place to go. Possibly. Sure. I hate this, but I have to say I love it. It's to Roberts and to Reba. Yes, I can do quite a few of those without even noticing it. I've learned uh, from the guy that uh, you have to be flexible and uh, you have to um, constantly read your clients, understand what they want and make sure you adjust to their needs and uh, provide service that they actually would like to buy. 
Anastasia realizes now that she has to offer a product her customers want at a price they can afford. And frankly, I think she's up to make the changes. It's been over six weeks since I gave her the action plan, and Anastasia is working on a bar relaunch with a new cocktail menu. We want to do some signature cocktails, which are just the river, um, blend the two spirits together and see what we can come up with. So maybe we can try some of them today. And Anastasia has employed Sonia, who is an experienced cocktail waitress. Hopefully the weather stays like this, we can sell some more of those. <laughs> nice and refreshing. Yeah. So we'll move on to the next one. It's all moving in the right direction. With a good team behind it, the new cocktail menu should prove a winner. Just a quick idea of a poster would be a stage with a cocktail with the banner. After we visited, um, we decided that we want to rebrand a few things, get a few new ideas about the cocktails and basically just stay ahead of the competition around us. But that large, empty restaurant is still bothering me. Imagine actually at the moment when I just put the bar only the restaurant. We haven't even concentrated on that yet, unfortunately. We have so many events and weddings booked up. It's difficult to do anything. I appreciate she has bookings, but the restaurant is gathering negative online reviews, and that needs to change. This was her ex-partner's dream. Maybe she just can't let go. I'd asked her to make the food on the restaurant menu more casual, but she's decided to work on the bar menu first. I did a couple of new things. Plus, we've uh, redesigned the format of the food menus, and we've created some of our own burgers and put them on the menu. So before we just had normal burger and uh, veggie burger, just gives a little bit variety to people. This is um, the old menu. It's got hundreds and hundreds of pages. Well, not that many, but enough. <laughs> and then this is obviously the new menu. Um, with one side where all the grills and things like that. Riva Restaurant and Bar is coming in for some stick online. I'm trying to help Erna Anastasia get on top of her problems. While the bar is thriving, the restaurant is struggling to pull in the locals. I've been there for drinks a few times myself, we've never actually eaten there. It wasn't cheap. That's come across as a bit expensive and not many people in there sometimes. The restaurant's food has been criticised for its quality and its price. Our reviewer singled out one dish in particular, the rump steak. It was tough, very dry, sinewy. It was just a slice of beef, it wasn't fried or anything. Not what, something that I would want to pay for, to be honest. I'm wondering whether it's not just the quality, but the prices that aren't going down well with the people of Gravesend. I want to test my theory on our three reviewers, but it won't please Tracy, who's a vegetarian. This meal here, <laughs> if you were served this anywhere, what would you think about it? I'd be happy to have that put down if I you not overly, no. no. Okay. So, can I just ask, because we want to look at what's a reasonable price for the locality. So, I just want to ask you, first of all, if you were to be served this in a pub, what sort of price would you be prepared to pay for this piece? And if you could write it down as well. In a pub? Nine or ten pounds? Well, I would say, yeah, I would say nine. Ten, nine, nine let's go, let's go nine. Okay. If you were served this in a cafe? Seven ninety five. What do you like? Around the area. Around here? Five ninety nine. Yeah, about six pounds, maybe seven. Six fifty. Six fifty. And if you were served this in a proper, like a restaurant. Well, I was gonna say about twenty. Eighteen to twenty. You're a cheapskate, I can tell. Every single time you want to pay less for the restaurant. If you were served that in a post restaurant, I wouldn't pay more than fifteen pounds. I would say they'd ask for probably about mm -hmm. okay. pounds. You're outvoted on that one. Okay, so would you like to know the reality of the pricing structure around here? I'd love to. Okay, so if we start with the pub, the average price for steak and chips is £12.63, which means that you're not prepared to pay the £3.63 extra. The cafe would be charging £7.72, so you're one pound light on that. 
and the restaurant. If I tell you that this actually did come from Reva and cost £22.50, I know you wouldn't eat it anyway, Tracy, but for you... No, I wouldn't eat it again. I mean, I have had that at that restaurant. Um, and it, it looked as bad as that when I got it, and believe you me, it tasted as bad as it looks. Oh dear, that's not great. My test suggests that Reva's food is falling short on both taste and cost. I've seen and heard everything I need to know. Now I can give Anastasia some suggestions on how to avoid getting bad reviews. But the fine dining restaurant was her ex-partner's dream, not hers. I just wonder if Anastasia is emotionally ready to make the changes. Now, if we look at the specifics of the complaints, they're very clear to me. They, they all cluster around one or two things. And the first thing is this temperature problem. This is impacting really strongly on your customer satisfaction or lack of it. So what I would say is that instead of just kind of ramping up the heating, doing things, actually be very specific. Go for radiant heaters. I think at relatively small cost, you could get rid of a lot of that problem. Unlike normal radiators, which have to heat the air in this huge drafty space, radiant heaters would direct heat straight at the customers. Then we get on to, I think, probably the major problem about this, which is I don't think Gravesend is ready or prepared to pay the kind of prices for this kind of dining. You know, you have far too few customers. And to me, that says everything. It doesn't work. What I'm going to suggest is that this could be a really cool, classy bar lounge from the front door right through to here. And to complement the change in the feel, the ambiance of the thing, you also change the food offer. I would suggest burgers. Now, I'm not talking about some grotty, horrible, frozen thing you get that's as cheap as chips and nasty. You get really good quality meat. You mince it yourself. You cook it to order. You get good buns, good pickles, good chutneys. If it's chicken, it's free range. Keep it dead simple. Okay. But if Anastasia is going to do any of this, she must also tell the locals. She's in a prime spot on the River Thames with scores of potential customers right on her doorstep. By relaunching it, by you know saying, this is what we're now all about, this is a different place, thereby getting rid of the bad reviews because you're not doing the things that people didn't like anymore, I think it's simple. Well, I've kind of inherited a lot of it, as I said, for the previous um, partner, and this was his idea of a place. So this might have been his dream. It's not your bloody dream, is it? It's your nightmare. Yes. <laughs> okay. So get rid of the bloat, get rid of the sodding chairs and the tables and the glassware and everything else, and make it the cool, classy, wonderful bar that you want it to be. So my plan of action focuses on changing the restaurant into a lounge bar. It should have a simple bar style menu with affordable prices. And perhaps the drinks menu could be revamped too with some new house cocktails. The layout should be less formal with fewer tables and more sofas. She should tackle the heating problem, possibly using radiant heaters. And once she's done at least some of this, then relaunch to attract lots of new local customers. What I find upsetting is that you might come over as a cool customer. You're the glacial blonde, you know, but I don't believe that's who you are. I think you're an emotional, warm person who wants to enjoy their life, wants to enjoy the customers, wants to enjoy the business. Is that not right? Yes, it's true. And I think that's where we go with this. Yes, yes. If you cry, I'll cry too. <laughs> <laughs> plenty of work to do, and Anastasia wastes no time looking at new furnishings to extend the bar space. It would be nice to have like a proper L shape sofa in the corner. Lighter. It's quite deep, isn't it, in colour? We'll have a look. I think it looks really nice. There's a lot of good things in the way of and everything like that. There's a lot to think about. It's nice to see ideas and what is sword and things like that because our furniture was made specifically for us, mm. but coming out of here. We can go to our supplier and get him maybe to design something for us and actually exactly. make specifically measured up for Riva like we've done before. So Anastasia is not prepared to spend any money yet 
but at least she seems to be on the right lines. Better to start small, perhaps. She's concentrating first on sprucing up the outside. We're just put the really colourful, fresh plants in the pots, and funny enough, it just you walk around from the street, you can see them because there's something there, and the um, weather be nice and gentle to us, so we try to keep our doors open. Mm, I think the summer weather might have distracted her from the real problem. A restaurant few people want to eat in with a major draft problem in the winter months. Instead, she's focusing on brightening up the side terrace, where there's a strange new edifice waiting to be revealed. This is kind of a new addition for the summers, while well, it's probably colder winters as well. It's a nice little house where people can literally sit down and enjoy their lunch or dinner on a beautiful afternoon. We don't get many beautiful afternoons, but whatever we have. And to use this space, you'll have to pay. I'm not sure what people think about it, but I think it's quite a nice idea to add to the terrace and hopefully she likes it. Frankly, I think Anastasia has just blown her money on a gimmick when she should be spending money on something inside where she can really make a difference. So I need to shake things up and focus Anastasia on making her bar bigger and better. And I think I know how. To say I love it. And those critical reviewers are returning. Hi. And this time they're undercover. I'll submit another half steak, please. My other half ran so hard to chew through the steak. And she made his knuckles go white when he was cutting it. Gravesend to see if Anastasia has taken up my suggestions and done enough to put an end to her bad online reviews. And the undercover reviewers will soon be revealed in a face to face encounter. Hello, Anastasia. Hi, how are you? How are you? All right, thank On you. this beautiful day, have you made any decisions about definitely closing the restaurant, keeping it just bar? What, what's um, the... We haven't. 100% decided I'm not there because I've got a few weddings to go on until yeah. next April. It's kind of going to be difficult to do anything. Now, what's happening about the food offer? Well, we're here, so the steaks are in the bar a little bit cheaper. Um, and the steak here, which is a rump steak, is only $13.95 with chips. Um, yeah, we've some new supplies. We were able to put the prices down because of the, obviously, if we get charged less. So Sam had the new steak on his return visit, but not Tracy's boyfriend. That could explain why their experience was so different. I think the type of thing you suggested, like right. the burgers, um, they are actually flying out. We sell burgers every day. Right. <laughs> so come the winter, what's happened about having infrared heating or some other kind We're of We're going to definitely have a look of, um, to get additional heaters in place. This just depends on the winter, the wind and things like that. But you've got to be really planning this ahead of time yeah, because you don't want to end up back in the same old cold no, suit as you were not last absolutely. year. You know, I mean, that would be really sad. Now, what about all your rich or at least employed neighbours here? Have you done anything about mail shots or putting anything through the door? Um, or we haven't done them? recently. We're just designing some leaflets at the moment, and then we're going to go and do the local resident as soon as we get our uh, cocktail menu leaflets done and incorporate, obviously, the bar menu into it as well. On one hand, it makes sense putting all the new ideas on a single flyer, but on the other hand, it adds another delay, which I reckon Riva could do without. So there's still quite a lot in train. Um, not everything by any means finished. No, it's but a work in progress. Work always. In work. Okay. I was really hoping Anastasia would recognise the urgency of resolving the restaurant's problems, but it hasn't happened. One thing that's undeniably true is the restaurant today is not cold, but that's because it's midsummer. They have changed the tables around, but other than that, it's exactly the same. I think a lot of work in progress, but unless Anastasia gets onto this by the early autumn to make these changes, she's going to have the same lousy reviews about the temperature, at any rate, next winter too. I'm frustrated that Anastasia has spent money on this when I think there are more immediate priorities inside. Perfectly placed for a view of the estuary. I think it's a shame it's not just open for people to sit in rather than having a little chain. 
why do I wish the money had been spent somewhere else? Right now, Anastasia has a more pressing concern. A face-to-face -face encounter with undercover reviewer Tracy. It can be really disheartening for customers to complain because obviously um, my life for the last three and a half years has been in this premises. Anastasia has been joined by bar manager James. Undercover reviewer Sam couldn't make this meeting, but I still want Anastasia and James to hear about his experiences. Tracy, meanwhile, is champing at the bit. It's quite the apprehensive, yeah, but I think she needs to hear these things and she needs to know that it's coming from a nice angle. We're trying to help her. Thank you very much for coming, Tracy. Thank you for having me. The purpose of us getting together in this way is for you to hear what the reviewers have to say, your chance to talk about it, and of course, Tracy as well. Any explanations, apologies, whatever you want to do. The quality of the restaurant's food has brought complaints, particularly the steak. Sam didn't enjoy it on his first visit. It was just a slice of beef, it wasn't fried or anything. Not what something that I would want to pay for, to be honest. However, Sam had a better experience second time round. Oh my god, I've got to say that it's a really nice piece of steak. Thanks very much. But when Tracy went back, the steak was still a problem. I think it's a good point the knuckles. <laughs> Actually made his knuckles go white when he was cutting it. It was really chewy. Sorry, he's in, just got to the middle of the steak. Is that yeah. slightly chewy? Me too. Okay. <laughs> when the bill came out, she asked if we were happy with the price and didn't really offer to take anything off or kind of acknowledge that the food wasn't to our liking, unfortunately. Okay, I think it's true to say that most of the complaints are predicated on the restaurant food. It does seem to be that, uh, you know, the steak in particular comes up for either praise or, or um, condemnation. Yes, steak sometimes can be difficult, and as I said, like when we were speaking earlier, we've changed the suppliers now. As you can see by the half was hacking at the steak, and he found it really hard, it wasn't pleasant to eat. And again, you said that you changed your supplier, perhaps that was just before you changed, so that may have been the cup that you didn't enjoy serving to customers. On their first visit, the reviewers weren't that impressed with customer service, but Sam was much happier on his return. Do you have to pay to sit in there? You can, you if you want to. Is that right? The improvements made are definitely on the service. Um, I felt like I wanted customer this time, I was, just, uh, I was somebody there, like in the right sort of thing. Tracy didn't feel it was great first time round. Kind of owner, which I think it was her, a blonde lady, was sat in the corner um, looking very miserable, and we kind of thought maybe she's sort of going down with the ship, really. And on her second visit, she wasn't impressed either. She didn't greet us, didn't acknowledge that she was the owner at all, so she could have been a cleaner kind of bobbing around or a, a bar lady. Um, I don't know, she was quite dismissive. Tracy, even though you talked to Anastasia, you mm. still didn't find her quite as you I wanted. wanted to track you down, really, and, and approach you for conversation, um, just because I wanted to know who you were and, mm. and to hear from you. And if I owned a place like this, I would shout it from the rooftops. You should really be proud. It's a beautiful place. Um, there's a difference between proud, being proud and there's a difference between showing off, and I believe you're the personality that would like to show everything off you have. I don't. I'd like to have a, and be proud of what I do. So I guess yeah. it's just a different just personality. It doesn't come across to the customers that it's your place. You think, oh, you know... I never wanted them, them to. Yeah. I don't want them to know that it's my place. I work around the stage all the time. She works so hard doing the outside, inside the office, and doing all the emails, doing all the other stuff, keeping the road. So now and again, yes, yeah, she does need to sit down and have a glass of wine. And chill out for a little while. I know sometimes, but she must have had a hard day. They do that out the back. Yeah, that's understandable. We all have bad days. That's understandable. Keep it out the way of the customers. It'll yeah. definitely make a difference. The welcome may have been chilly, but reviewers thought the room was too. I had a, a top one, I had to put my coats on. The waitress said, if you come again, please don't come when it's cold or warm. Come on a day when it's neither hot nor cold, so. <laughs> Tracy 
Tell me about the temperature when you were here. Was it too hot, too cold? It was really cold. Um, we had our coats on throughout dinner. Um, and we knew that we were over the sea. We kind of took that into perspective. Uh, we tried our best to heat the restaurant, but it's like I say, we can't do too much with the restaurant. Obviously, the gaps in the floor, we're not able to touch ourselves either. The gaps between the planks, and you can see the sea down. I mean, on a bad winter's day, that, I don't care what you did, that, you could have as many heaters as you want, that's freezing. This one's the rubber seals, we, we seal them off. But so you can? Yeah. So well, I've got someone, I've got told, uh, see someone from the planning office, and they said, I mean, we're not able to touch them. Well, well no, you no, need no, to can't. discuss between yourselves mm. what is the truth of this, but the fact is that if you seal the holes, that's going to make a huge difference. And then what we talked about was having infrared space heaters, not fan heaters. Because the fan heaters, this is a huge volume. And when it's cold, I don't think they're ever going to be effective. Tracy had commented on the restaurant lacking ambiance, probably because it was so empty. It's time of life, about eight o'clock. You'd think it would be a bit busier for dinner. The people that did arrive, for the dinner, we're all kind of late 40s, 50s, possibly even into their 60s, and it made us feel really out of place as a 30 something couple. We didn't feel like we could sit in, so I don't know if they're doing some kind of pensioner discount or something. Um, Tracy, I, I feel quite um, sensitive about this area. I mean, you can't stop older people coming in and saying, Sorry, you're not young and beautiful enough, and you know, you're going to sully the ambience of my restaurant. Please, would you go to an old people's place? I mean, I know you are young, but I mean, I found that quite an odd comment because when you go out normally, you have a mix of people, and yeah. I don't think I normally bother to look at who's around me anyway. It was that we were scared to talk because we thought, God, everybody is 20, 30 years older, and we felt out of place. We felt if we spoke that, you know, they would look over at us and think, what are they talking about? And everybody was so much different to us as customers. We didn't fit in in that sense. Are you and saying they weren't talking to each other? They were, but different generations talk to each other. this shows you've got an enormous yeah. ego, Tracy. No, I'm not I mean, sure. why would they give a about what you were talking no, about? I'm not here talking. talking. If it, if this is bizarre. No, it, there was such an age difference. We, we were dressed differently. It might be just a day where yeah. just an uh, older generation all put together. Yeah. Oh, sorry for living <laughs> <laughs> It was just more of an obvious gap for us. After their second visits to Reva, our two undercover reviewers reached contrasting conclusions. I would 100% go back to Reva. Last time my experience was that, and this time it was that. We played Russian roulette with Reva tonight, and we lost. So Sam had a very good return visit, and enjoyed it, and Tracy, no, not so much, I'm afraid. The second time round, it just really let us down, and... I, my heart sank for you, if anything got worse. You can't please everybody, I guess, and she has a few weird perception about well, all the people sitting next to her listening to her conversations and all sorts of weird things, which is, um, as Ruth said, I think it's a little bit bizarre, but... To sum up what I've heard and what I've seen, um, Anastasia, I think this has huge potential. If you really major on the bar, major on simpler food, whether it's in the bar or in here, get the heating right, get the warmth of the welcome right, and handling complaints right, I can't see any problem why this shouldn't really go from strength to strength. Tracy, I think some of the things you've said are absolutely spot on, and I think some of them are completely subjective and bizarre. Mm -hmm. I really do. You know, the food wasn't good enough on your second visit, and you want to enjoy this place. You like yeah. this place, I in essence. You want to love this yeah. place. There's been a lot of talk, but for any business, it's all about returning customers. Billion dollar question. Would you come back? As it was when we last came, no. But if things have changed and they improve, then yeah, definitely. It can be an amazing place. So just make it the experience that we wanted it to be, really. Well, hopefully, when you come, if you do come back next time, supplies change, so hopefully you'll enjoy the next time. Mm, so after all this, does Anastasia feel it has been worthwhile? We'll learn from this. We'll um, try to improve certain things and hopefully we'll get on from there and um, improve our service and hopefully if we can please difficult clients like that then it shouldn't be no problem with the rest of them. <laughs>
it simple, and that's what Anastasia has to do at Riva. Forget fine dining, put the restaurant just to use for parties and things, but concentrate on the bar area, simple food, good prices, get the crowds in, make it convivial, keep it simple. Since we filmed, Reva's location and waterside views have continued to be praised online. But there is still no sign of the struggling restaurant becoming a cool lounge bar. If you're running a business troubled by online reviews, or you're a reviewer with a story to tell, please go to channel4.com forward slash take part.